Hey guys, welcome to Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'm Jeremy Yoder and today I'm not cooking brisket, but I am cooking biscuits because I have three kind of ultra premium backyard offsets and I want to do a head to head because I could fill these things up with thermometers, but the easiest way to visualize how evenly heat is distributed is with biscuits. Greetings from Michigan. You might be wondering why am I in Michigan? Well, this Friday, October 20th, I'm gonna be helping my older brother out. We're gonna be doing a barbecue pop-up here in the Detroit area. If you wanna come and say hi, you wanna hang out, you wanna talk barbecue, I'm gonna be there on Friday from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. and we're doing pre-sale meals. So my brother and I are gonna be cooking a bunch of brisket, a bunch of ribs and stuff like that. So if you wanna try my food, you can show up, you can hang out with me and I'm even gonna be doing a brisket demo. So if you had any questions about doing briskets or if you have any questions about barbecue in general, or you just want to come by and say hi, smoke a cigar, do whatever you want, then this Friday, October 20th, come by, but check out the link in the description to make sure you buy one of those pre-sale tickets so that we can guarantee that we have food for you. I don't want you to, you know, drive in, say you're driving an hour and you show up and there's no food left. Make sure you get one of those pre-sale tickets. You can always buy more food, but to ensure that everybody has some, check out the pre-sale ticket. So the link is in the description if you wanna come by and say hi, you don't have to buy any food, whatever. I'll be there and we can hang out and uh, eat some good barbecue and just have a good time with other people who love cooking meat with fire. So check it out. So I first did a biscuit test on my old country Brazos back in the day. I had seen people use bread and they see how evenly it toasts, but I had some biscuits in the fridge. I didn't have any bread, so I used biscuits and I wasn't aware that it was a thing and maybe it wasn't a thing, I don't know but I've seen people do the biscuit test all over the place since then. And so I thought, let's go ahead and do some biscuits because you get to see how they rise as well as how dark they get because both of those are an indication of the heat because temperature and heat are not the same thing. So it's a very important thing that everybody needs to understand because heat is gonna be the total amount of energy and temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles of a substance. You don't have to know all the intricacies of that, but know that temperature and heat aren't quite the same thing. So we're gonna keep an eye on both using these biscuits. So I'm gonna fill up the Franklin pit, the TMG volunteer and the Goldie's pit with biscuits and we're gonna see how evenly things cook. So the directions on here say to cook between 325 and 350. So I'm gonna keep all of these smokers at an indicated temperature of about 325 degrees. And we're gonna see how evenly they cook. Oh! First up, the TMG volunteer and it has two racks extra biscuits for this. Thanks, Walmart. Two, should be good. And then we'll check out. Next up, the Goldie's Pit. Right here you can see where the heat was coming out before the addition of the water pan. So we added a water pan, so hopefully that helps things out. And we're gonna go over how we have each of these set up in a minute here. I'm gonna put one on that side, one over here, and one there. Lastly, we have the Franklin pit, and if we have any extra biscuits, not biscuits, biscuits, if we have any extra biscuits, we'll throw them probably on the Goldie's pit because it could use a couple more, but we got pretty good coverage, so let's see. All the way in the back. That one. Let's do a rundown of the smokers. First up is the TMG Volunteer. I believe the base price on this is 4,500 bucks. And let me say this at the outset, you're not gonna make a mistake with any of these smokers. There are benefits and drawbacks, compromises to all of them, but they're all really good pits. So keep that in mind as we do this comparison. So this one, I have the damper on the stack completely wide open and I have the door cracked about this much. And that seems to run pretty evenly across the board. When it comes to the temperature, this thing tends to read a lower temperature than what's actually happening at the grate. 
So typically I reduce the cooking temperatures by 50 degrees from what I would normally do. So if I want to cook at 275, I let both of these gauges hit about 225 and I get similar results. If I want to go low and smoky, I keep it between 180 and 200. But that's how this pit likes to run. Let's move on to the Goldie's pit. So the Goldie's pit has a retail price of 4,200 bucks. So in the same ballpark there. And the way I have this one set up is I have the damper 75% closed. Johnny from Goldie's told me that's how he likes to run the pit. And I have the firebox door cracked and we're running between 325 and 350. Lastly, let's move on to the Franklin pit. The Franklin pit has a retail price of $5,150. That includes shipping. And this one, there's nothing to adjust on the stack because there's no damper at all. And the way I have the firebox set up is I have the door basically closed, but it's not locked in place. In my experience, this has been the easiest backyard pit to run. It requires less adjustment and there are fewer adjustments that you can make. So it's a good thing that the way it's set up works so well. Let's take a peek. So what I'm noticing here is big shock next to the firebox, there's a hot spot. But also for all of these biscuits, what I've noticed is the side that's facing the fire is definitely cooking faster. It's browner and you can tell that it's moving along in the cook more quickly. On the top rack, we have kind of similar results to the bottom, but less severe. So the top rack actually cooks more gently than the bottom rack, at least on this half. Then again, we are cooking really hot. These aren't really barbecue temperatures. So the airflow is gonna be a little bit different. But if we look at one of these ones that's close to the firebox, you can see both the top and bottom are getting a lot of heat. So I would suggest probably running the damper halfway closed and you can reduce the speed of the airflow and make it cook more gently. But this is really hot in my hands, so I'm gonna put it back down. All right, on to the next pit. All right, here we see right in the center, it's hot but everywhere else is pretty even. Looking pretty good. Pretty pleased with that. Okay. Now we have the Franklin pit. And this edge right here is a little more brown, not black. And we've been cruising at 350 on this pit. These are cooking nice and gently, nice and gently. And the ones right by the stack are just a little more brown. So initial impression is it looks like from here to the stack is good cooking space. So almost the entire grade is usable. And it looks like it's pretty even all the way across. And I think the slightly darker color for the ones on the end right next to the stack is because it's pulling that hot air down. And so what you get is pretty even cooking from one end to the other. So pretty pleased with that. Let's check in on the volunteer one more time and we'll make our way through and come to final conclusions. One more time. All right, so it looks like on this half of the grate, we have pretty harsh cooking. On this half, it looks really nice. But I think a lower temperature and maybe using the damper a little bit just to slow the airflow and have it a little gentler. And then we'll have a majority of this as good cooking space and then pretty much the whole top rack as good cooking space. But the whole point of doing this is because we're after information. So we've got some good information here. And lastly, I wanna take a look at the bottoms of these to see how harshly it's cooking on the bottom. So here, you still get some of that harshness on the bottom. Let's check this guy. Yeah, definitely harsh on the bottom. It don't take a rocket surgeon. Um, these are nice. These are nice and golden brown. Golden brown on the top. Just on that front edge again. So it's like the airflow is moving a little too much. It might be some radiant heat. But I think those are adjustments that are easily made. I talked to Brandon from TMG and he runs the stack wide open. I think my preference would be for it to be about 50% closed. So final results for the volunteer, we put 32 biscuits on there, 12 of them were either burnt or partially burnt, and then 20 came out beautiful. So based on the temperature and then how we had the stack set and how we had the door to the firebox set, these are the results that we got. So I think if we adjusted some things, we could get to maybe three or four or five of these that are kind of a little bit toasty, and then the rest are going to end up nice. 
So for the volunteer with these settings, 37.5% burnt or partially burnt. But like I said, I think we could adjust that a lot. Looking at the Franklin pit, we've actually had the highest indicated temperatures on here, as high as like 375. But this one's the gentlest cooking usually. So from what I'm seeing right here, it looks like the only parts that got a little crispy are the ones that are facing the fire right here. So let's get these off and do a little bit closer examination. Four, five, six, seven. For the Franklin pit, we had 10 biscuits on there. It also shows you that the pit is smaller. But of those 10 biscuits, only two, these two right here, had anything that was burnt, just on this edge. And to me, it's remarkably good. Now, of course, there's not a lot of space, but it's very gentle cooking because of how the air flows in there. Flows in that pit like a big offset would. And so instead of pulling the heat kind of across the grates, like you would on the Volunteer, it allows the heat to go up top, move across the cook chamber, and then get pulled down at the stack end. So two out of the 10, or 20%, had a burnt edge right here but none of them burnt completely and 80% of them were prime time, beautiful barbecue weather. And uh, I'm actually really happy with that. Now, let's check on the Goldie's Pit. All right, it looks like we have two right here in the middle that got pretty hot, but other than that, it looks pretty consistent for the rest of the grate. So let's pull them off, examine these, and see how we did. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What's two divided by 14? You tell me. Uh, 0.1. 0.14, 14 point something percent? 0.1428. Ah, so it is 14 point something percent. I used to teach math to kids. They would be real disappointed in me if I, if I, got, that, <laughs> I got that wrong. Anyway, so 14 bris uh, keep saying briskets, 14 biscuits on the Goldie's Pit, uh, which gives you some indication of the size and the great space. And we burned kind of two completely on the bottom side. It's pretty burned on both of these. You can see, and then we had 12 that ended up really nice. The bottom side of these looks really good. So we had two kind of complete losses and the 12 really good ones. With the Franklin pit, we had two with just kind of a crispy edge. And then the, the rest of those biscuits were really nice and then all the other ones were great. And then with the volunteer, I think we had 12 that got a little crispy and then 20 that were really nice. I've cooked really good food on all of these pits that I've been really happy with. So I think that's just a, a difference in airflow. So if you monitor the airflow and change it a little bit, then you'd get some different results. Also, it's kind of a result of how those thermometers read. I thought about running these pits at different temperatures so that I could get the best results possible in each, but that would involve running the Volunteer at probably 250, running the Goldie's pit at 325, and the Franklin pit at 350. But then I realized if I run different temperatures, then it's not really quite the same test. So what I did was I had the damper set up on the Volunteer like the builder suggested, and then I did the same with the Goldie's pit, and there's no damper on the Franklin pit, so that issue was solved for me, and I thought running the same temperature the whole time will be the fairest way to go about this test. Now, this isn't the be-all, end-all of barbecue pits, but it's just one piece of information that you can use when you make decisions about how you're gonna run your fires in your pits and which pit you want to get, because let's face it, none of these pits are cheap, and it's hard-earned money that you're investing into something that's gonna last a long time, and I think having the most information possible is gonna be helpful to you. So, what have I concluded? Franklin Pit cooks really even, the Goldie's Pit has that little hot spot right in the middle, but apart from that, cooks really even. And then the Volunteer, I think if you adjust the damper and stuff, can cook really even. It has the potential to have a ton of great space where you can make really great barbecue. Now, those are my results today with the current weather, the current conditions, the kind of wood that I'm using. Your results might be different. So keep that in mind if you're trying to recreate this at home, and I suggest doing that. It's not too expensive to get a couple rolls of biscuits and do this test on your own, and you know where your hot spots are gonna be. So I hope this information was helpful to you. If it was, hit the like button down below, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. There's one glaring omission. That is a Workhorse 1975 that I have that my brother is currently using because he's starting a barbecue business. I would have loved to have done this test with that too. Unfortunately, it's not here for me to use, but I think there's some good information to take away from this. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.